Hello, my name is Dan. I'm here for 1700. We're at the Mooney Valley Youth Fest, and I'm here with Cram. How are you, Cram? Hi, Dan. I'm very well, thank you. Now you've just uh, you've just come down today for obviously what is a drug and alcohol free festival, yep. um, all ages as well. So how do you feel about playing a festival like this? Oh, cool. Um, I think it's a good vibe. Um, I love playing gigs in parks too. You know, it's just like everyone can hang out and just check out the music. But you know, you don't need to have heaps of booze in that to have a good time. You're better off having the music and no booze than the booze and no music. Then Very true. You'd be in trouble. You? Yeah, you certainly would. Um, so, what do you think, especially it being an all ages event? Um, like, why do you think a festival like this is important? Um, mainly so the uh, under 18s can get in and go to it. You know, um, and are often um, really the, the the young crowd is always often the most vibed up. Big festivals, a lot of energy. And enthusiasm, and they're not, you know, not as cynical as some some older fans. But um, yep. and also, there's a, I don't know, it's just the more live sort of events that kids can go to, and if there's you know there's skating on or there's um, other sort of artistic things on there, they can check out. I think it's all really good. Cause that's they're into it. You know? Yeah, excellent. Now, um, it's it's not too long ago that you sort of first um, came out and played the live show solo just at Meredith. Um, how has it been evolving since then? Um, I've added a drummer since that show, um, so I can do some lead singing, and, and it's, it's it's gradually evolving. Um, and I've decided it's not today. We're doing a particular set for the gig today, but in the future, I'd like to do the whole album in sequence. Oh wow! So okay. it's kind of like um, because the record is so varied, it's, it takes a little bit of, of fine tuning to work out how exactly to do that. But I was working it out over the weekend, and um, sort of like every gig, we've only played like pretty much four or five shows. Yeah because one of my guitar players plays with Paul Kelly and he's really busy and my other guitar player is a busy guy too with other bands so we just get um, a chance to play when we can but it seems to be coming along pretty quickly for, for not that many shows it's, it's it's pretty much cooking now so I'm happy Excellent! Um, now the album mixtape, as you were saying, very varied and a lot of different genres um, was there anything that you tried um, to put together a, a certain genre maybe you attempted and just went, nah, this isn't working and threw it away? Not really No? <laughs> No, I'd, if anything, I'd come back to it. Sometimes, like the, the track uh, "Riding High," which is number two on the record, yep. we got sick to death of that, and that happens with loop-based stuff. Sometimes I don't know how like dance producers can keep perspective about their stuff when it has that repetitive quality to it. Yeah, and we sort of went, "Ah, oh, this is so we'll go on to something else." And then a mate came in and, and we played it to him, and he just said, "This is awesome," and we're like, hmm. "Oh, okay, yeah, cool." So. We um, came back to it and didn't really change it much, and that's pretty much the same on the record as it was that day. So, if anything, that it's easy when you're by yourself, you're playing all the instruments yourself, and it's always you. You can become a little bit jaded and bored with your own stuff because there's no one else to, to bounce it off. Yeah. Kind of like oh, that's crap, or that sounds boring, or whatever. Hmm. And later on, you might sort of go, oh, actually, with fresh ears, it's all right. Yeah. So I just tried to keep the whole album as fresh as possible, not um, labour over anything, and just record as many songs as I could before, um, before the money ran out. It seems like, is this a record that you've always, like this mix, mixtape concept, we have all these different genres, is this something you've always wanted to make but never had yeah, the opportunity, yeah. being uh, in the band? Like, I, I remember, I've been talking about this to my manager for years, talking about it to the band um, as well. I know spider has been pretty varied, but we do, our main sort of thing would be kind of the heavy blues, metal, rock sort of thing and pop, you know, and having Janet and myself in the same band and we sort of fusing the two together provides a varied thing but I always wanted to take it to a much greater extreme and also make have one person play everything yeah so it's just like a reflection of all your different musical um, influences your different radio you listen to all your different records you might listen to your iPod you'll have all these different on there everyone has a really varied taste in music unless you're kind of going through your hardcore punk phase or full-on urban hip-hop something like you know. that yep but generally most people like I listen to classical music I listen to folk I like metal I like hip-hop everything you know. um, so I wanted it to be as extreme as I could possibly do it and I kind of always thought that it would help the record to work better yeah in that it's way. a concept and not just the, not just the music that you're actually pushing on me so sure. yeah it's been around for years you know yeah and um, obviously you know you're finding some success already in Australia have you got any plans maybe to take this to um, overseas it was funny because I mixed it in New York last year and um, there was a lot of people over there who really liked it and, and I was surprised because they weren't didn't know me and um, that having that perception of 
being a fresh face and not kind of um, uh, or, or this guy from this big band and that's a drummer and all, you know, it was, yep. that was really cool. So there's been a bit of interest from over there, which is really cool. So I'm not quite sure how I'll do it. If I can take my whole band over, I will. But I might, there, there was talk of even thinking about doing an acoustic run as well. So we'll just see what happens. But if I can get all the guys over, I'll definitely do it. Hmm. Now that you've tackled something that's sort of, I suppose, this difficult and this grand, how are you going to feel coming back um, and getting behind the drums for a new Spider-Bad album? Um, no worries at all. You know? Yeah. It's like, honestly, it's we're like you, you see each other. It's like when you see family Christmas time, you know. Yeah. But my band is my family, and we're brothers and sisters. And there's a lot of soul between us, and so whenever we play, it's like it just has its own unique flavour. So nothing could ever really compare to it, and I feel actually even more free to do almost anything else. But my band will always be be the rock. But we might not make a record for another couple of years, or we don't really play that much anymore. But we're still very much. Um, in each other's minds and always ready to go. We're playing a show with Living End of Festival up in Queensland. I think it's next week. Sure. So, and so what happens is you turn up, you haven't seen each other for ages, and like, hey, you doing? What's going on? And you just walk out on stage and there's thousands of people and you just go, hey, how are Back you? Back again, What's yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's a, we're really in a good space and, and a really good headspace. And I'm just, I'm stoked that fans still like us after all these years. And there's a lot of new kids coming on board too. So when we do make a new record, um, It'll be an anniversary one we're thinking of doing in a couple of years' time. And it'll just be awesome. I can't wait. Well, um, yeah, we definitely can't wait for it either. Yeah, cheers, um, no sounds, you know, obviously you're enjoying the solo stuff. Um, yeah, totally. And I, I, feel, I sort of feel like I can do this and my band for as long as I want. And that's the main thing I wanted to do, why I kind of made it such a, I guess, a pretty out there record, is I didn't want it to be perceived as just another version of the band you're already in. And I wanted it to be seen as a serious thing. It's not just something you're doing for a bit of fun while your band's taking a break. And that's already sort of happened that people seem to be appreciating it from that point of view. So, um, you know, I couldn't ask for more. For sure. Well, thanks for having a chat to us no on worries. 1700. It's been great. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dan. We're at the Mooney Valley Youth Week.